Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Dr. Victoria Faruja Sant'Angelo, Principal General Practitioner, Head of the Immunization Service Department here in Malta and Chairman of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Policies. Dr. V Victoria Faruja Sant'Angelo, thank you for being with us here today. She's with us here today on such short notice in view of the um, recent article publication featured in a prominent Maltese newspaper which refers to a film which is seeking to revive claims that the use of the MMR vaccine is linked in some way or another to autism. I also understand that this same newspaper has now retracted these statements and will be issuing another article with evidence against the claim. Um, Dr. Faruja Sant'Angelo, can you elaborate on what happened recently? Yes, um, unfortunately this um, controversy has arisen again after it had been totally flawed and totally um, debunked, is the word, um, way back in 2010. Um, it, it had all started, let's go back in history, but this had all started by um, a certain Andrew Wakefield, who was a surgeon by profession, um, and uh, he wrote a paper in The Lancet, which is a very prestigious medical journal. And in this paper, he alleged that he examined 12 children who had already been suffering from autism, known to be suffering from autism, and he alleged that these children became autistic because they received the MMR vaccination. Um, this paper created a furore all over the medical profession, and because, as I said, this was in a very prestigious medical journal. However, on further investigation, um, evidence and scientific evidence discovered that the paper was flawed in many ways. Um, first of all, uh, Dr. Wakefield had um, personal interest in actually promoting, um, giving individual vaccinations instead of MMR vaccines because he was part um, of, a, of a company which produced only the mumps vaccine. Um, besides that, the way the research was carried out was not um, scientifically sound. And also his co-authors of this paper at the time um, eventually retracted their name from this paper. So, um, ultimately, The Lancet, realising that this paper was flawed in so many ways and unethical and was completely unethical, um, retracted the paper in 2010. And not only that, but Dr Wakefield was actually struck off the medical register in England. Uh, what happened next is that um, Andrew Wakefield went to the States, and that is where he started his anti-vaccine lobby. Um, and one of the uh, things that he did later on was that he produced this film to continue enforcing his idea that MMR and um, autism are related. Now, scientifically, MMR and autism have been proved over and over again that they are not related at all. Many, many scientific studies have been taking place um, involving over a million children worldwide. Um, studies which tried to associate a link between autism and MMR and never was a link found. So this uh, idea that Wakefield has produced and this idea that he is still trying to um, emphasize and still trying to convince parents that, you know, that MMR and autism are related, it has been scientifically disproved completely. Um, there are studies, one of the biggest studies that, that took place is uh, a very recent study in 2015, where 96,000 children were followed up from one year of age until the age of 16. Um, these children were all given the MMR vaccine. These children were compared to children who were not given the MMR vaccine. And what happened was that children without the MMR vaccine, uh, there were more cases of autism in those children than children with um, MMR vaccine. So um, eventually we have established that there is definitely no link between the two. Autism is something which is genetic. It is really the... the, the, the single cause of autism has not been um, found yet, but autism is something which is really thought to be genetic and children do develop autism as a developmental disorder, but it has no link whatsoever between 
uh, between it and and the MMR vaccine. And the fact that recently more light, more importance was given to this false research uh, here in Malta. Mm -hmm. What concerns you the most about all this? Yes, what concerns me, what concerns me is the fact that um, parents, we have uh, had several campaigns, we have education, um, doctors speak to their patients and uh, tell them about the importance of vaccines, about how safe vaccines are, because they are really safe, and I can explain that later. Um, and parents have become convinced that what I can say here in Malta is that we didn't suffer as much as many other people in, in Europe suffered, where the MMR vaccination rate decreased because people were afraid to give the vaccination um, to, to their children. However, here in Malta, we did not see that. In fact, our rates have remained relatively the same uh, from, let us say, that they did decrease a little bit, but not to, extent, to, the, to an extent where we are alarmed. And after having done all this work and after having you know, have, had parents being convinced that vaccines are safe for their children, then you get this um, article in the paper, which many people do read, and suddenly they become confused. And parents are not, they're not medically qualified, they're not like us. Uh, we know what the scientific facts are, we always base our teaching on scientific facts. But parents need to hear it from uh, somebody else. Exactly. And if they see this, this article and say, my goodness, which is, where is the truth? Where it may also lead to distrust in the relationship between the parent and the, and the patient and the doctor. And the doctor. And the doctor. And what we always emphasize is, and what we always try to tell parents and, and, and the general public, to always, whenever you, when one reads something, for example, if one you know, goes on the internet today, you find so many things on the internet sure. um, and on journals, please make sure where the source is. If the source is not a scientific source, then it is probably not factual. Always look, if you're talking about health and if you're reading about health, always find the scientific sources. Uh, what will happen if parents um, discredit the use of MMR vaccine here in Malta and they don't uh, give it to their children, as is actually um, in the guidelines? Mm. Um, can you refer to what happened in Europe? When oh, yes. Um, as I mentioned before, some, uh, the vaccination rates in Europe, especially for MMR, decreased over the last 10 years. And they decreased because of this false information that they were receiving. Parents were afraid um, to give their, the MMR vaccine to their children. What happened was that once the vaccination rate falls below 95% um, of the child population, then you will get pockets of um, people who are not immune to this disease which can be deadly, um, quite deadly in fact, and has see very serious complications. Now you have people who are not immune to it and therefore they are prone, they are susceptible to the disease itself. And what happens is that once, this is a very contagious disease, once a person who is Im not immune to it gets the disease, he will very quickly pass it on to other non-immune people. Um, and this is what causes the outbreaks. And we've had outbreaks in Germany, we've had outbreaks in England, and very, very recently, this year, 2016-2017, we've had large outbreaks in Italy and also in Romania. In Romania, um, there were almost 4,000 cases of measles reported over the last year and 17 deaths. Now, that is a lot. I mean, when you talk about um, people dying in the 21st century, people dying of a disease which is vaccine preventable, it is um, horrendous. More and more when this vaccine is readily available in a developed country. Exactly. And it's not just available, but it is also very safe. Vaccines have been proven to be extremely safe. Um, they are efficient. They prevent deaths and they prevent disease. And there are so far 26 diseases which can be prevented by vaccines. Measles is one of them. We are talking about measles now because this article uh, concerned uh, the, vaccine. the vaccine, the actual vaccine MMR, which prevents uh, the diseases of measles, mumps and rubella. But out of the three, the most serious and the one which can cause most complications is measles. Rubella can also cause a lot of complications if it is, take, if, if it is contracted by a pregnant woman because uh, rubella as, as such is not a serious disease. It is it's self-limiting, it passes after two or three days. But if um, a pregnant woman catches rubella, it will cause devastating 
um, problems in the child. Um, in, the, in the past, we used to see children suffering from what we call rubella syndrome, where they are born um, no, uh, uh, with vision problems, with hearing problems, um, with brain damage. It is, um, is it not a nice way? sight to see. And for, for clarity's sake, in view of uh, parents who are possibly watching this video, so if I do not immunize my, my, my child, my baby, for mm -hmm. the measles, mumps, rubella mm -hmm. vaccine now, um, they may acquire self-limiting diseases like rubella and also measles, which is potentially yes, fatal. Yes, of course. And if that period goes by and everything is well, later on the child, if she grows to become a pregnant mother, her grand, her children, so your grandchildren, yes. may contract yes, rubella of course, of syndrome. Course. Because once you are not immune, then you are always open to what we call the wild throughout viruses. Throughout the life. Yes, throughout the life. Um, exactly. if, if we have a very good vaccination rate, that means if all the children at that particular age when they should be vaccinated are vaccinated, then they will help the community to be immune against that disease. Um, however, if the rates fall, then you do not have what we call the herd immunity. So your community, your country, is not um, protected. protected. It's not protected. So what happens is that you have a few pockets of people who are not immune and therefore they will be susceptible to getting that water, whatever age in their life because they are just not immune. And their susceptibility and their will introduce the, 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 yes. the disease to the back rest again, of the... Back again, back yes, again, yes. How should we as medical professionals now advocate the use of the MMR vaccine in light of, recent, of the recent episodes which happened? Yes, we must keep insisting that vaccines are safe that vaccines prevent disease and that pre vaccines save lives. Because even um, statistics from WHO have shown that over the last 10 years, at least two to three million, and that's a big number, two to three million deaths have been prevented by vaccines. So those are the three um, main messages that I would like to convey. They are safe, they prevent disease and they prevent uh, deaths. And also what I would like to um, transmit here is that, especially to the general public, uh, I can't say this to the doctors because we as doctors always read scientifically um, and evidence-based articles. But for the general public, whenever um, they try to look at uh, internet articles, um, articles in journals, chat lines, social media, please be sure that whatever you read which concerns health is um, evidence-based and is coming from a scientific source. From your point of view, given your professional role here in Malta, um, what is your message to journalists in general and the media here in Malta? Yes, um, my message is be very careful uh, what you publish, because what you publish is read by everybody and uh, not everybody can actually sift the good from the bad. So it is very important that journalists also do the research well and whatever is written in, in, in the media and whatever is said in the media has a good source behind it. One last comment from my end. If I'm a parent and I want to know more about the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, where can I get readily available information which you would advise? Um, uh, Primary Healthcare has a website um, uh, which uh, if it's, it's on health.gov. If one goes to health.gov, look, looks um, uh, at services and chooses primary healthcare, you will find the primary child health and immunization site. If one goes to the primary child health and immunization site, there is um, uh, all the diseases, all the vaccine preventable diseases, um, everything about the vaccine, vaccine safety. Vaccine, and reliable information. And reliable also. information because um, it is written by, by experts in the field. Thank you, Dr. Faruja Santangelo, for your time. Um, we hope that this interview has helped to further your knowledge on the MMR vaccine and clarify any doubts of whether the MMR vaccine is in fact related to autism. We invite you to share this video with your professional colleagues and also with uh, parents who are concerned about its use. Thank you for your time.